I'm gonna go over all the restrictions, everything that you need to do before you go um, book that trip, before you get on a plane, when you get to the airport, when you get to Manila, and when you get to the hotel. So. Yes, I am finally in Manila. Um, it took a while to get back here because of the COVID restrictions, but after waiting so many months, I was finally able to book my trip and somehow made it here. Um, the experience wasn't so smooth for me, so I want to share some information that will make anybody traveling to the Philippines. I want to make sure that your experience is a lot better than it was for me. Not really complaining, um, you know, people were that just doing their jobs. So I wanna uh, show you everything to prepare you for the trip, okay? So stay tuned. All right, I made the list because I wanna make sure that I don't forget. So if I'm looking down, I'm reading the list. Again, I wanna give you as much information as you need um, to help you with your trip. So the first thing um, that I want to say is that this video is for people who are considered Balikbayan. So what is a Balikbayan? Uh, that means you were born in the Philippines, but you or your family um, decided to migrate to somewhere else and became a citizen of that country. In my case, um, when I was 14 years old, I decided I wanted to study in America my whole family actually migrated to the United States. We became U.S. citizens and got our blue passport, so we don't no longer have red passports. So now we are considered Balikbayan. All right, that's very important. Um, it's important because the Philippines is on a current strict restriction on who's coming into the country. You can only come to the country if you have a Philippine passport, a red passport, or if you have proof that you were actually born in the Philippines. So I'm gonna go over all the restrictions, everything that you need to do before you go um, book that trip, before you get on a plane, when you get to the airport, when you get to Manila, and when you get to the hotel. So everything is gonna be covered. This is gonna be a longer video than my normal. So I wanna make sure that I give you all the information that you need. All right, the first thing uh, for valid bias is you want to show proof that you were actually born in the Philippines. So um, in my case, my mom was very meticulous. I was visiting, visiting her a couple of weeks ago, and I said, hey, mom, you have a copy of my birth certificate. It disappears for like two minutes, and <laughs> two, minutes two minutes later, she goes, here you go. So yeah. So you need a um, proof of birth. So in my case, I brought a uh, my original birth certificate. Really what's preferred is you get a copy of your birth certificate that is certified by um, the Philippine government. They have what's called PSA. I'm going to create the link down below that so we don't have to search for it. Um, they'll be in our in the description of this video. Click that link. It'll take you there to their online process. Basically, you register with them, give them all the information. You tell them how to send your certificate. Um, even though I had, I knew I was gonna get my birth certificate from my mom. I still wanted to go through the process to see how it was. So fortunately, my mom had the birth certificate because I never got the uh, copy, copy of my birth certificate from PSA. Um, in their defense, they are really short-handed right now because of COVID. So um, the process is slower. It's a little funny because um, this morning I was watching TV and there was actually an ad from PSA saying, hey, if you need a copy of your birth certificate, you know, call us or go through the online registration and in a couple of days, you'll get a copy of your birth certificate. That wasn't the case in my, uh, in my personal case. 
So I don't know uh, what the normal is, but again, the link is below. You want to use their service, go ahead and do so. Um, the, your other option is producing your old passport. So I have no clue where my Philippine passport is. I think I stored it somewhere, um, but I never thought that I would need it again. So um, I might look for it when I get back to the city, but yeah. So birth certificate or uh, Philippine passport, that's what you need. Otherwise, uh, you're probably not going to be allowed in the country or even leave the airport because they, they do check it. So I'll, I'll go over the complete process. The second thing that you need to know is that you also need to pre-book a hotel stay in a hotel that is sanctioned officially by the Philippine government. Again, there's a, a list. Um, and in the Philippines, you know, there is a lot of hotels to choose from. Again, I'm going to post that link below. Um, that way you can just click it and get the full list. So you want to make sure that you have confirmation from the hotel that you're booked for the full 10 days. So the Philippines is under strict quarantine um, and they are requiring you to be at your hotel for the full 10 days. Um, I'll go over, you know, what that means in a minute. And I also have some maybe exciting news at the end of this. So please stay tuned. Um, I'll share that at the end of the video. The third thing you want to do is you want to pre-register with the Red Cross Philippines um, to pay for your COVID testing. So, um, because of the loss here, on the 6th or 7th day of your hotel quarantine, the Red Cross will send somebody to your hotel to do your nose swab for your COVID testing. So um, I'll tell you how that happens in a minute. But basically, you want to make sure you register for it. And then you print out the form uh, saying that you have registered if you're going to need it later. So pay attention. Um, the next thing on my list is you want to make sure that you have a round trip ticket. So normally for Balik Bayans, you have, you know, a full year. You don't really need a visa or anything. If you're a tourist, uh, you can stay in the Philippines for 30 days, but if you're staying longer, you need the visa. Um, right now, again, it's stricter. Uh, I think they're limiting the time even for Balik Bayans. Um, but make sure you have proof that you have a trip out of the country. It shows when you're getting into the country and when you're coming back. All right. Um, and then this is important. So when I got to Atlanta, um, and mind you, my flight was going through South Korea. One of the flight crew uh, went up the podium and said, Oh, by the way, if you don't have proof that you had a negative COVID test within the last 72 hours, we're not going to let you get in the plane. Of course, my heart was pumping because I looked through all the requirements for the Philippines, but I didn't look at any requirements for South um, Korea. So I didn't get my, um, my COVID test. So I had to go up the podium and, you know, crossing my fingers. I talked to the flight crew and she said, yep, you only have transit if you're not going out of the airport and staying in Korea for any number of uh, hours or days, then you don't need that COVID test. So, phew. But my recommendation is check with your airline because I don't know if other layovers have um, stricter, especially if you don't have a direct flight from wherever you're coming from into Manila. So find that out. All right, so um, just really what I want to tell you is get to the airport early. So I flew out of Atlanta and, you know, I forgot that it was Memorial Day weekend and the airport was packed. And, and really they're, um, they're very strict. 
with uh, travel requirements, I actually had to produce the same forms five times. So I flew from Nashville to Atlanta to check all the documentations in Atlanta, to check the birth certificate, to check the, um, that you have reservations in the hotel, to check the, to make sure that you have a round trip ticket. And then when I got to Atlanta, Again, and checking my bags, they, they check the same documents. Um, and then they checked it again, uh, Delta Airlines at the gate, they checked the same documents. When I got to South Korea, um, I had to go to the transit center and again, show the same documents. And then when you go to the Philippines, so be prepared, put it all in a folder, put it in sequence, the birth certificate, hotel, and then round trip information in that order. So that's that's kind of how they checked it um, in in all of those uh, checkpoints. So um, be be very prepared. All right. So let me tell you about what happens at the airport. So again, I like I said, I flew from Nashville into Atlanta. I just had to do the documents and they check my bags um, and then uh, because of that the the length of the total flight I actually ended up staying a night in Atlanta and then had to uh, clean my bags and recheck my bags in the morning so when I get to Atlanta airport um, again the Delta station was like it, it was just crazy um, I got to the airport at 7 o'clock and I did um, get to the gate until maybe an hour later. That's how crazy it was. Then we get in this line and, and you, you finally uh, you present your documents and then you know you want to make sure that your bags at 50, any check bags are 50 pounds or under. I got to tell you that um, once I was maybe 2 pounds over on my uh, weight allotment, they actually had to had me take out two pounds of chocolates <laughs> to put it in another bag. So yeah, make sure you pre-weigh it. I thought I did, but I guess my scale was off. So um, make sure you do that. So then um, when I get to the gate, there's actually three processes. One is they call you and say, hey, this is the document check. They check your documents again, you know, birth certificate, hotel, and your ticket, and then they put a they mark it on your boarding um, pass. So that's another thing. Make sure you have a printed boarding pass and not just on your phone. If you're gonna need it, they can print it for you. But if you have it, it just makes the the process much easier. So they check the document. Boom. Ten minutes later, then they call you. Now we're doing a temperature check. This is about maybe 20 minutes prior to boarding. So then you go in line again. Um, so it's good that you know this because you know they're, they're going to do that. It's better if you're first in line rather than the 200 guy in line because then you're going to be a long line, right? So yeah, get there, just anticipate the, the announcement and then get in the first line. So they check your temperature and then they put a, a mark that they check the temperature. And then the third, the third item is when you're actually um, getting on board and, and they call your zone and they, they make sure that you had the two check marks. Otherwise, you'll get off the line and get in another line to complete your documentation. So get that all set. All right. So then when you're, um, if you are going into a transit, country so you have a layover you're not flying directly to manila then you will be um so the, I, I, i'm not sure how the process is, is at every airport i'm going to explain to you the process in south korea so land in south korea they actually had um everybody that were transferring in a different section everybody going and staying in korea in another section so the transfer people, there's a board that I saw with my name on it. You know, they call it and they mark their name. And they actually 
take you to the transfer um, area. You go to the transfer area um, in South Korea, um, in that case it was on the fourth floor, called the transfer center, and then you have to present your documents. You know, again, for a certificate, the hotel, they actually, this time they were very thorough. They, they made sure that the hotel that you chose is on the officially sanctioned uh, list of hotels. So again, you want to make sure you click that link below and make sure that the hotel you're booking is one of the sanctioned hotels. So that's once they do that, they do a document clear uh, notation on your paper uh, boarding pass um, that you need to present um, for your trip to Manila. All right, so it was a 14 hour flight from Atlanta, South Korea. I had a three and a half hour uh, layover in South Korea. And then now it's time to board um, the plane to Manila. The two things that they check is they make sure that you have that documentation uh, confirmed on your ticket and then they do a temperature check. All right, so the South Korea uh, gate entry was pretty non-eventful, it was pretty easy. All right, so four and a half later, you know, we're ready to arrive in Manila. During the trip, there are they are going to give you three forms. One is the health questionnaire. Two is the immigration form. And the third one is for customs. Uh, the information that you need to have handy is your passport number and passport information, where you're staying in the Philippines, including the barangay. Um, you know, just candidly between us. <laughs> I didn't really know the barangay information, so I kind of made it up. But I think I was correct. So I'm staying in Taguig City. So for barangay, I just put... Port Bonifacio, because I think I read that somewhere. Um, but that's what I put in the form. So just between you and me, I may have lied, but I don't think I did. <laughs> so, um, and, and the last information that you need, and this is critical, is you need a local Philippine contact number. So without that, you might, again, you might have some delay. So have that all information. All right. So finally, we land in the Philippines, and I'm going to go through the process at the airport in Manila. So you get out of your plane, and the very first thing that you need this that you see is there's a mini barricade. Uh, there's two booths, and then there's one lady. There's basically three lines for help questionnaire. Uh, it's by IATF, um, and and basically it's for COVID control. So you go, go there and you hand them your uh, health questionnaire form. Again, they check the information, they check the barangay information. She didn't say anything about it, so I think we're good with that. And then she asked me for the contact number. So that's the important piece. I didn't have that phone number. So then I was texting my aunt and my uncles to say, hey, I need one of your phone numbers to fill in in this because you do need a local Philippine phone number and obviously my uh, US phone number won't work. So I put that in and then we're good to go. All right, once you get out of that, uh, that line, that barricade, you then um, go into the temperature check. Um, Manila is actually more sophisticated than the temperature checks in both South Korea and um, Atlanta. They, in Atlanta and South Korea, they had that handheld digital non-touch um, temperature that they put on your you know, forehead. Uh, they don't touch it, but they just put it in front of it. Um, in Manila, they actually have the thermal sensor. So you, you don't really have to go in front of everybody. You just face the camera, take off your cap. If you had a cap, I was wearing a cap last night. So you have to take, take it off um, and then you just look at the camera scans you for fever, and then they give you a green light. All right, the next stop is gate 16. Gate 16 is where the Department of Tourism is. So you go in there, and then this is where they validate that you are staying at a um, sanctioned hotel. Um, 
in in Manila when you're staying. So you go in there, you show your confirmation, you verify that you have reservations for the shuttle, um, and then they give you a form uh, that you need to keep, and then, then just keep this in mind, keep that form handy because you're gonna need it to get out of the airport. So basically it's information about your courier and your driver and your driver's phone number. Very key too. All right, so once you get out of that, then they um, send you around the corner. There's a table there uh, for Red Cross. Remember I had told you that you need to prepay for the Red Cross te testing? So you go there uh, to make your appointment for your um, COVID testing. So basically what uh, they do is they set up an appointment on your sixth or seventh day um, and Red Cross sends somebody to your hotel and they do a swap to make sure that you are COVID free. So when um, once you get that COVID test, um, right now it's very strict. Again, I have maybe I have some uh, important news for you at the end of this video, so stick around. But right now, whether you test negative or positive, you're required to stay at your hotel for the full 10 days. So uh, keep that in mind. So Red Cross, pretty easy. They're very friendly. That's one thing I love about the Philippines. Everybody's polite and everybody's very friendly. You know, people say, sir, kuya, and just they, they, they really want to help and, and they're there for you. Um, you know, I, you know, just candidly, I didn't register, pre-register for Red Cross. So I had to do that all um, while I was there. That's why I, I recommended you doing it because um, they were asking me, do you have your Red Cross voucher? And I said, I'm sorry, I didn't know about it, even though I researched it. It didn't show in my research, but yeah, the link is down below. I'll make sure you do that. So anyway, after that, next stop is immigration. Immigration is then when you have to show your proof of birth uh, in the Philippines, either with the birth certificate ESA approved um, is the preferred method in our passport. In my case, they scanned my passport, um, took maybe a minute, they showed me uh, proof of uh, birth, showed them my birth certificate, and they said, yep, you're good to go. So that was really simple. The last step before you know getting out of the airport for the travel service is um, customs. Again, that was very non-eventful. Um, all I had were, you know, things to give um, some of the people that I love here in the Philippines uh, that does so much for me. Um, you know, I'll, that'll be another video because I just want to share like what this experience is, um, is about and, and how wonderful and why I love coming to the Philippines. So anyway, I, I brought some stuff and, you know, it's all personal effects. Otherwise, I had nothing to declare. So the, the customs uh, stop was, was pretty flawless, you know, took maybe 30 seconds. Um, and then you're out. So then you're walking towards the gate. You're actually not allowed to go out of the airport. You have to give the voucher the courier voucher, whoever your um, shuttle service is, they'll take you from the airport to your hotel. You have to give that to one of the guards. They call the driver. The driver gets out of his or her shuttle, um, walks up to you, and then takes your bags into the shuttle. You want to make sure you don't go anywhere else. So if you know, people are watching you, you want to make sure that you just follow your driver and then have him load the um, him or her the, the bags and then get into the car. So um, I'll, the last piece of this video is I'll tell you what happens at the hotel. So um, the hotel that I chose was about 20, 25 minutes um, from the airport. There wasn't any traffic at all. So it was great because I came late and late nights in the Philippines, obviously there's no traffic. Um, so we got to the hotel, really nice hotel, I recommend it. It's, uh, I'm staying at the Vivier Hotel, 
here in Munting Lupa City in Alabang. And it's right across South Mall. So if you've ever been to the Philippines, you know that that's one of the good malls here in in this part of uh, Metro Manila in Alabang. Probably one of the uh, first malls that I I saw, you know, coming back um, into the Philippines for the first time. This was about holy cow, maybe twenty five years, thirty years ago. But anyway, it's it's a long time. Maybe 20 years ago. Um, anyway, um, seeing right across uh, the South Mall, and I'll, I'll probably do a video of the surrounding area once I'm free um, to go out of the hotel. Um, so, anyway, the hotel experience. When you get to the hotel, the driver asks you to stay in the car while he unloads um, all your bags. And then through the window, I see that they're, you know, disinfecting it. They're spraying it with like Lysol and stuff. And then they ask for my backpack, did the same thing. They had me sit down. The driver goes in and talks to the hotel staff. Somebody comes and interviews me on the door, you know, ask for my name. I'm on the list. And then finally, I was allowed to go into the lobby. You actually don't go into the lobby. They have some barricades. Um, for this hotel because I think they're only using this for um, quarantine guests. So you go in there, there's a list, like a register, put your name and contact information, and then they they tell you about the meal process, we'll I'll go through in a second. There's a form that you fill if you're allergic to anything or if you have any diet dietary or religious preferences for your meal. In my case, I just tell the guy, <laughs> so I'm kind of overweight right now because I love food. I especially love Filipino food. So um, I had no problems with that. But then you don't really go anywhere on your left is the elevator. <laughs> so we go from the car, to this mini section of the lobby, right into the elevator. There. They really don't want you to go anywhere. They, they mean business, you know, with this quarantine stuff. So then they uh, take you to your room. You don't even get a key. Um, you just get an internet password. Um, and they, you know, basically, you're locked in for 10 days. Um, I, I, like I said, I have, we had some good news at the end of this video, so stick around. So. Um, it's funny because the following day, which is today, this morning, I checked to see whether they have delivered breakfast already. Um, although I knew it wasn't going to be there. It was like 6 in the morning when I woke up. So I opened the door. 10 seconds later, I was just looking out. Maybe 5 or 10 seconds later, the door starts alarming. <laughs> so yeah. Again, they don't, give you, they don't give you a key. The door alarms if you, you know, have it propped up open so you really can't go out in there um so i just you know my advice is just go along with it it's 10 days max you know hopefully you'll find things to do like i am i'm doing this video um trying to help out people that are coming to the philippines um just find like creative things to do so i think i'm gonna do a daily vlog and and keep me busy with it so um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the meal. So um, your hotel is probably going to have meal service. So you are not allowed to call. Um, you know, in the States, we use Uber Eats. Here in Manila, we use uh, Grab. Uh, Grab is really good. So I, I knew when I, you know, when I was um, in Manila the last time we, we ordered in sometimes and we use grab so yeah you can't have grab deliver you food unfortunately um you just have to go with the the meal service that the hotel provides in this case the food was really good so last night you know i had adobo um and rice and this morning actually it was also adobo for for breakfast which is i don't want it at all it was pretty good and they had uh dain na bonus again super tasty and then for lunch it was like they had like a, a spread of food i couldn't even finish it it was like salad there was bread there was rice there was like 
two main entrees. One was chicken curry, and then one was pork dish. Not really sure what it was, but it was super yummy. So I had everything in there. There's even a little dessert thing. So yeah, food was great. And uh, depending on your hotel, might be part of your rate, or maybe you have a per diem for food that, that you have to pay. Last thing that I want to tell you is um, the hotel that I'm seeing has, actually has a gro grocery service. So in my case, you know, I wanted soda, I wanted extra shampoo and stuff. You can order it um, through the front desk. Again, you're not allowed to use Grab or any other place to have it delivered. So you just go there. One thing to note is even if it's not on the list, just ask. In my case, I needed a SIM card. Right, so I asked the lady if you know, hey, can you guys buy a SIM card for me? And they did deliver, so it's pretty convenient. I also needed batteries because I needed batteries for this light, although this lighting, oh, it's not the best. I apologize for that. So, in the next videos, I'll, I'll try and fix it. So, anyway, grocery service is good. Um, I think that's all you need to know. Um, like I said, I'm stuck here in 10 days, so I'll think of some other videos that might be helpful. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to Filipino.com or our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, and Twitter accounts, please do so. Subscribe, click that like button if this in, uh, information was helpful to you. Um, share this video if you know somebody that's traveling to the Philippines and, and they know what to do. We really appreciate your, um, your support and help us grow. Thank you. Mabuhay. Okay, I was hoping to um, share some good news. I've been waiting all day for news that they're going to ease the quarantine rules for anyone that's already vaccinated, any foreigner that's already vaccinated. It's 10, 18 p.m. And unfortunately, we didn't get the news that we wanted. So I was hoping to deliver that and benefit from that rule. So anyway, I'll uh, check again tomorrow and we'll add it to the next video. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.